Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostman, outlines character creation. It's a really great place for the Dungeon Master and the player to sit down and interact with each other. Now, if you like Dungeons and Dragons content, hit that subscribe button down there. While you're at it, hit that little bell icon for updates. Big thumbs up. Really does go a long way and lets us know how we're doing. First off, I have to make a quick disclaimer here. If you're the kind of Dungeon Master who likes to, say, give your players 4th level, give them some enhanced weapons and armor, and skip on to the 2nd or 3rd chapter of the book, don't do it. That is the lazy Dungeon Master style. And it'll completely ruin the adventure for events that go on throughout later chapters. Starting out at the very beginning, what level 1 is the way this book is designed. Your players need to feel like they're part of the action and the local happenings that are going on in 10 towns. If not, the adventure will make totally no sense at all to them and be a complete total letdown to everybody. With that being said, they suggest a tactic that I personally have been using since the 1980s. Before even starting with an adventure, I like to sit down with new players and talk to them about how they might know each other or even my veteran players. How does this work into each of the characters' backstories? Um, and most of all, how well does each player get along with the other? I have personally found that this process works out favorably for all players involved. If you haven't done this in the past, Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is a fantastic place to start doing this. The book also suggests something else that I've been doing. Are the players from here? Or are they transplants, say, from another location? Such as um, a retired military family that moved here from Neverwinter when you were a teenager. Uh, your parents faked their deaths to escape the restrictions of the Thieves Guild in Waterdeep to start a new life with brand new identities in the frozen Northlands. Or maybe possibly, when you were an infant, you and your parents narrowly escaped the volcanic explosion the rain dashed down upon Thunder Tree. Unbeknownst to you, your twin sibling was lost in the rush to flee. A really huge side note here, as a dungeon master, you can use this to your advantage. This information can be used to build excitement in this story, hell even other locations, you know, providing the player survive the elements, the monsters, and the even bigger bad. While they're adventuring further than 11th level, from the 13 backgrounds outlined in the player's handbook, starting on page 125, Rami the Frostmaiden also provides a separate adventure hook that is tied to events in the story's progression that goes along with their backgrounds. This makes the players feel like there's something special about them in the story. All the players start out with winter survival gear. This is found on page 20 of the player's handbook. They also receive a trinket, which can be found in Appendix A on page 263 of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. And each player has a secret that they're hiding from each other. That list can be found in Appendix B on pages 264 and 265 of Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. It's totally up to the Dungeon Master to make a small deck of cards with uh, these secrets on them. Some of these might not fit into your DM playing style, and you can just leave them out. Or use them at another time when you feel more comfortable with them. May I put the secrets on 3x5 cards, fan them out for my players to choose one. But that's not all. There's also a playable race which inhabits the spine of the world. They're originally seen in the 25-page Elemental Evil Player's Companion. I will be putting a link down in the description area or your free licensed downloadable copy from Wizards of the Coast. They are a reclusive race known as the Goliath, and they have their own history and special racial bonuses. They've been thought to be rumor or myth. They live far above where the tallest trees quit growing, high in the uppermost peaks of the spine of the world, where it is difficult for most to breathe because the air is thin there and the winds howl with their frigid bite. Kind of like where we were last week when we went to the summit house of Pikes Peak, west of Colorado Springs, Colorado, where the elevation there is 14,115 feet above sea level. 
few have seen a Goliath in person, not to mention have grown to have a relationship with any of one kind. Goliaths can come from a few different clans. The Sky Tower, the Worm Doom, or a clan that is totally made up between the player and the Dungeon Master. As a Goliath, you can receive a Strength Increase Bonus of plus 2, and a Constitution Increase Bonus of plus 1. You can read, speak, and write Common and Giant. Now I can already see where this race will come in very handy in other campaign settings. You age the same as humans do when you hit maturity milestones at the same stages of life. Growing up to be about 7 feet to 8 feet tall and weighing between 280 and 340 pounds. Classified as a medium sized creature. Your base walking speed is 30 feet and you have a natural proficiency in athletics. When it comes to lifting, pushing, pulling, dragging, and carrying, you're counted as one size larger. Once per long rest, you can use Stone's Endurance, which with your reaction, you can roll a d12 and add your constitution modifier to reduce damage that you receive. You also have a natural resistance to cold, and you quickly acclimate to altitudes over 20,000 feet in elevation. Did I forget to mention movement speed? Here. No matter what race you are, you are restricted to a quarter mile per hour travel distance without snowshoes on. Now, if you are wearing them, you can get up to a half a mile per hour. If you are fortunate enough to have the use of a dog sled, you can cut your travel time down to one mile per hour. That is unless you get lost in a blizzard or find yourself caught in an avalanche. Now, that's a completely different story for another time. Thank you for watching, and you have a great day.